Hi everyone and welcome to this video about reading data from your digital electricity meter through its P1 port. Like some other Belgians, a while ago my analog electricity meter got replaced by a digital one. Initially I was pretty happy with that, as it would give me a better insight in the power consumption and injection back to the network by the solar panel production. Exactly that last is what makes me less happy now. To make a long story short, the Belgian government didn't really keep their promise and no longer allows the energy meter to go backwards with overproduction from solar panels. Unfortunately, that's how things go with governments and the situation is what it is, so I can as well make use of the digital meter now that I have it. A digital, or as they call it in the Netherlands, smart electricity meter is communicating back to the network operator. This could be done using power line communication technology or using the cellular network, which is the case in Belgium, or over a private radio network. Other utility meters in the proximity of that one can make use of that connection to send their data as well. For example, a water meter or meter for natural gas. As the distributor or utility company has that information, there is a good chance that they provide insight in it to you through their website. The quality and especially granularity of the data that is available depends a lot on the company you need to work with. In general, if you just want to see your consumption in a nice graph, in not too much detail, you should be good with what they offer. If you need the info to trigger automation or you want to see near real-time data on the other hand, then you can make good use of the P1 port and you're watching the right video. While I was exploring all of this, I noticed that devices in different countries or regions are working in a slightly different way and through different standards. Even if they follow the same standards, which should be the case for Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg, there are still small inconsistencies. As I live in Belgium, the info I will share here is tailored to what we have here, Nevertheless, the same approach should work for different regions. First, a bit more about the meter. Fluvius, that's the name of my energy distribution company, is using three different types of meters. One for single phase installations, another for three phase installations, and finally a natural gas meter that uses the digital meter to send its data. The electricity meters that I mentioned have two serial ports on the front of the device, behind the yellow cover. Both these ports can be used to read data from. The S1 port, the one on the left side, is sending raw data around 2600 to 4000 times a second. The port on the right side, P1, is a bit calmer and provides information around once a second in a nicely formatted form. Both the P1 and S1 ports are following the serial RS422 standard. They are using an RG12 connector, but fortunately RG11 works as well with the correct pinout. Important to know is that these ports, at least in my case, are disabled by default and I had to enable them through the website of the distributor. To connect to the port, you will need a cable, which you can create yourself with the following pinout. If you want to use a RG11 connector, pin 1 and 6 can be left unused as these are intended to provide a 5 volt power supply, but as we'll use a PC, we don't need this. Another option, if you can't make a cable or you're a bit lazy, just as me, is to buy one of the pre-made cables. These are easily available and in most of the cases they have a serial to USB converter already integrated. Now a bit more about the data format coming over that serial connection. The data format of the P1 port as well as the earlier discussed physical format is using the DSMR 502 P1 standard. DSMR stands for Dutch Smart Meter Requirements. And as the name suggests, this was developed and is maintained by our northern neighbors. There is extensive documentation available of the standard and each version of it. Just to make things clear and understandable, I will try to give a summary. The whole message, called the Telegram or COSAM object, coming from the P1 port in DSMR looks like the following. Each block of info starts with a slash, and after the start there is a fixed three-digit model-specific identification. Then we have the letter 5 and another three-digit fixed device-unique identification. Next we have the data itself, which consists of several lines, and the message ends with an exclamation mark followed by a CRC code. That CRC field contains a CRC16 calculated value of the rest of the block. The data lines start with a Nobis code, which has a channel number and type of data for that line. Next, we can find the actual value between parentheses, and if there is a unit present of that value, it's separated by an asterisk. The meaning of those OBIS codes can be found in the documentation, but it's not always easy to find. I think we had enough of theory by now, so let's plug in the cable to the meter and our PC and start reading the serial port. 
I'll use a clean Debian installation, but any other Linux distribution should work as well. First, we need to install some prerequisites. Once that's done, we can have a look at which device represents our serial port. As I'm using a pre-made P1 cable with an integrated USB to serial adapter, my device appears as DevTTY USB 0. To make sure that a regular user has access to that device, I'll change the permissions. Now we are ready to read data from the serial port. As you can see, this looks exactly as what I described before. Let's take a single message from the output and try to map it to the OBIS codes and find out what info we can find. First, we have the ID, followed by the serial number of the electricity meter in ASCII hex. Next, we have the timestamp of the telegram, and then we can start to see information from our meter. First, we have the counter for total consumption during daytime, followed by the same for nighttime. After that, we can see the same for our production, daytime and nighttime, and we can see which rate is currently active, day or night. The next items are about the current situations. We see our current production and current consumption, followed by a detail per phase, which is the same here as I have a single phase meter. Next to that, we can see the current voltage and current flowing through the meter, and we can see if the meter is switched on or off. There is also some information about the maximum allowed power or current per phase, and this suggests that there can be a limitation implied by the meter. After that, we can find a placeholder for a message and then we can see the other devices which are present on the bus. So for our natural gas meter, we first have the serial number in ASCII hex again. We see the switch position on or off and we can see the last reading from that natural gas meter. Now that we know what we can do with the data, we can create a Python script or any other script that can parse the data and make use of it. This could be simply to reformat the data in a readable format, but it could also be used to trigger some other system like home automation or to save the data for later analysis. Just as a test, I created a small Python script, which I will quickly demonstrate here. In case you're interested in the script, I made it available on GitHub. The script definitely needs more attention, but I guess it can serve well as a source for someone that wants to set this up as a small project by using data coming from the P1 port. Hopefully this video was useful to you. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked this video, please put a thumbs up. And if you like this or similar content, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. I also have a blog, yanzi.be, on which you can find all information which I shared here in detail. So if you're interested in going through this yourself, I really recommend you to have a look there. Thanks again, and I hope to see you back here soon.